Hi, Joe here from Shutter Speak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling face here on YouTube. So I love Adobe Lightroom. I think that in terms of editing, the things that they keep adding are just incredible. All the AI based features and the masking and all of those, those new features that make editing photos so incredibly easy. It, it just, it blows my mind. But the catalog system really hasn't changed in many, many years. Same thing if you're a Luminar Neo user, right? You got a great editing system, but your catalog system's kind of lacking. And this goes on for, for many other programs. Uh, maybe you're using on one or, or whatever it is you might be using. If the catalog system just isn't doing what you need it to do, or maybe it's things that you haven't even thought of, but once you see what I'm talking about here and some of the things that this program that I'm going to show you can do, it might just open your eyes and make you think very differently about the system that you're using to catalog your images now. Um, so in terms of like Lightroom, Adobe Bridge, these things haven't changed in many years. And they do have some really great features to help us find our photos, keywording, and of course we can sort by you know, date and camera taken and we can rate and flag. There are all sorts of ways to help us find our pictures. But let's say, for example, you're an avid bird photographer and you want to put together a collection of some of your best pictures of maybe a, uh, an eagle or eagles, right? Maybe you've taken pictures of eagles on, on dozens and dozens and dozens of different dates over the course of years. How do you go through now and find all of those pictures? Are you going to go and search through directory after directory in Lightroom looking for these eagle pictures? Or maybe you're like me and, and you know you sort everything by year and then by month. And, and at the end of the month, I append the folder name with a keyword. And maybe I put an eagle in there. But do I really want to go back year after year after year searching for every folder that I've appended with the word eagle, so I know that there are eagles in there. I mean, I guess that's what I'd have to do. Or, of course, I would have had to have keyworded every one of those images upon import. And sometimes that's just not reasonable. In fact, many times, many times we're out shooting many different things over the course of a day. And when we come back and unload our card, there's a whole lot of stuff in there. Maybe even if it is you're, you're out there photographing birds, you may have photographed four or five different types of birds in one shoot. It may not just be one type of bird. So bulk keywording is just too generic. What do you, you could keyword the word bird, but that, that's not very specific, right? And if you keyworded the word eagle, that of course is gonna affect other things that aren't eagles, and it's gonna give you poor results if you search for that keyword, right? So what is it that could bridge this gap? Well, wouldn't it be cool if there was a program that could catalog all of our photos, including stuff that we've already taken, new stuff as well as stuff that we've taken in the past, analyze it using AI, and then keyword it for us, and then allow us to pull up any picture, any time from any date in just literally a second. And just typing in a keyword like dolphin could bring up hundreds of dolphin pictures that we've taken across a span of years. Wouldn't that be incredible? Or maybe pull up a picture of a person and say, hey, you know what? Show me every other picture I've ever taken, ever, of this person and have them all come up in just an instant. Wouldn't that be incredible? Or maybe for whatever reason you need pictures of a blue car. And wouldn't it be cool if you could just type in blue car and have all of these things come up and not have to worry about tagging all of these photos as you import them. Well, good news because such a program does exist. It's called Exire Photo 2024. And I'm going to show you some of the things that it can do. And I'm just scratching the surface here. But when you see some of the things that this program can do, I think you're going to think differently about your cataloging system. And maybe, just maybe, this might be something that you might want to consider. So, hey, let's take a look. All right, so I am here in Exire Photo 2024. 
And I do have my 2023 catalog selected, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen there. And the incredible thing about this is really all you need to do is click here and add folders. And you can literally just, like if you're using Lightroom and you're organizing your photos by year, you could just add a year at a time if you wanted to. Or you could just add in, like my photos are all sit on, on, a, on a single drive. I just added the drive and then let it run overnight and just analyze all the photos. But you do want to also tick off the includes subfolders box in there if you do go that route. So it goes through all your subfolders for you. But once it's analyzed everything, it has a, an idea of everything in your database. And it makes finding things just incredibly simple. So now if you have used Exire Photo in the past, this 2024 version does use AI. So you probably... Well, you're going to have two options. You can import your previous keywording or you can let it reanalyze and you're going to get much better results. So I would personally let it reanalyze. Now, there's also a program called Exire Search, and that's a plugin that goes into Lightroom and allows you to search directly from Lightroom. And I've actually done a video on that, and that's a great program, but it doesn't have the AI capabilities that Exire Photo 2024 does. And there's no compatible Lightroom plugin for it yet, but we can, of course, just use Exire Photo and, and launch straight from there. So one of the things that it could not do in the past, for example, was identify a manatee, right? So, and you can see here the keyword, it's just identified as an animal. And if I did a search for manatee, nothing's gonna come up. Um, if I did a search for, say, uh, like a seal or something more common like that, it would find manatees in there, but I've also photographed seals, so that's not really gonna help me all that much, right? So one of the great things about this is using AI, it's able to correctly identify the things that I want to pull out of my catalog. So of course you do have your whole cataloging system and you can see all of your photos by However, you have them organized on your drive. I have them organized by year. And you can also create collections as well. So, and groups of collections, which is great because if you're a Lightroom user, you know how useful having uh, collections can be. So that's something you can do here in Exire Photo 2024 as well. So after all of your photos are cataloged and tagged by the system, the magic of this program here, of course, you know, we do have a nice system of organization here, right? Where we can see all of our photos. Uh, we do have the ability to create collections and groups. But this little section over here is really where all the magic happens. So right here is find by text prompt. So once I do that, you're going to see prompt AI. Now I can pretty much type just about anything into here. And let's look for amenities. And again, this was something the program struggled with in previous versions, but since we are using the AI-based version now, look at that. So what has it done for me? It has created a group of 100 photos of manatees. Now I can change how many search results there are in my preferences, but you know, I'm, I'm fine with 100, but if I wanted even more or less, you know, that is something I could set. And you see here, we have a nice group of manatee pictures. And first off, did you see how fast that was, by the way? And I mean, it really nails it. Now, in the past with Exire, as you got deeper into the search results, they tended to get a little bit less accurate. But you notice here that we actually pulled 100 manatee photos with zero failures. Everyone is a manatee photo. So that's pretty amazing right so it did a great job nails it right out of the gate well, well let's take a look wait is this a manatee yes that is a manatee see and it's not much manatee there but it got it right okay so yeah nailed it so that's perfect let's see what else it can do okay so this prompt ai search is really super powerful and the more information you put into it just the better and better your results are going to be. Let's say we just wanted predominantly yellow photos. 
all we need to do is just type in yellow and we have predominantly yellow photos. Maybe we wanted a blue car. Let's throw that in there and predominantly blue cars. So you see the better and better information that you put in, the better results you're going to get back out of this. And that's one of the things you can do. And, and it's definitely my favorite feature for sure. But we have a whole bunch of other things that we can do here. So we have a duplicate finder. We can simply hit this button here and find duplicates on our catalog. And that can help us save space. Uh, we can do find by GPS, right? So I can define an area that I want to look for photos in just by kind of going to the mouse and maybe I'll click over uh, here in St. Petersburg region. Uh, let's go a little further down and let's start to search there. And all of a sudden now we have images that were taken in that area based on the uh, GPS coordinates that were in the camera in, on my Nikon C9, my DJI drone, or if uh, you let the camera link over to your cell phone to pull GPS coordinates when you're taking pictures. So incredibly handy to use uh, for that as well. Okay, one of the other things I wanted to show you is the find by keyword button. So now this is basically the way the system has tagged everything by keyword. And now from here, we could kind of go in and say, well, let me see, I want to look at animal. And then from here, well, oh, marine mammal, let's look at marine mammal. And let's look at dolphins. Okay. And now that we have dolphins selected, we could just say start search. And now we have pictures of dolphins just like that. So that's another way of doing it. Now the AI is definitely more powerful because things aren't always keyworded the way you might think. So for example, like if we look at manatee, right? Manatee is keyworded as animal. It's not keyworded as manatee, although the search AI can find it as a manatee, but it hasn't been keyworded as a manatee. So um, definitely, I think that the search AI is probably more powerful, but this is just a great way to be able to drill down sometimes and find things that you're looking for. I mean, you can even look for colors and things like that here. So there is that as well. Okay, so let's look at another amazing tool. We can use the find people button to search for particular people in our catalog. And once the face is selected, you'll see there's some options there, face, frontal, adult, female, eyes open, right? And now all we really need to do is just say, start search and you'll get everything. And then of course the results start to differ a little bit after it's exhausted what it has, but you get the point. It very quickly found the people or the person that I was looking for in my search. We can also use the find faces tool. And now you see here, we have all sorts of options. One face, portraits, two faces, several, right? Any, and from baby all the way to elderly, right? The type of person we want, we can select male, uh, female, smile, no smile, and kind of anything in between. And of course the maximum number of entries, we can search the entire database, just the current view or certain folders. Okay, one of the other nice things we can do is create collections of photos. So let's say I wanted to create a collection of my favorite manatees. Okay, my favorite manatees. There we go. Now I can just go back to the manatee search and say, well, I want this guy here and I want him and him and maybe him. And let's just drag them over. And now if we click on this, we have our collection of favorite manatee pictures right at our fingertips. So that's another really nice feature to have uh, to be able to kind of help you categorize uh, pictures and create collections of, of things that you want quick access to. And of course you can create groups of collections as well, which is just super handy. Okay, one of the other amazing things that this can do, this software is it has built-in analytics. So we're here on our manatee view. We have a 100 manatee photos and we can just go up to analytics and say, open analytics. And now we can see, for example, 
Most of these pictures were taken with a Z6 II, a small amount with the, my Z9, some with a D300S, and a bunch with uh, a Nikon Z7. And we can go over here and just change this around. Let's look at the lenses that were used. And again, we can see what lenses we were using and all sorts of different options here, ISO, focal length, etc. And you can see how much in terms of statistics we can pull out of this. And so why would you even care? Well, one of the things is you could do this on, say, you know, your last year's worth of photos and maybe identify a lens that you aren't using anymore. And it may be something that you might want to consider maybe selling to get something new. All right, so it's amazing that we can do all of these different things, right? But what good is it if we can't edit these photos, right? So let's take my little manatee friend right here and I just can right click on him and you'll see here, I can export it out to a whole bunch of different programs here. And I'm gonna send it out to Luminar Neo for editing and right off the bat there, there you go. And you can add additional editors as well. So if there's a program that you're using and it doesn't show up, all you need to do is point it right to the executable and it will add that editor in there for you. And there he is. And of course, no catalog system would be complete without the ability to rate your photos, right? So in Exire, as you're going through these, you'll see these little boxes down here at the bottom and you can just click on them and select a star rating for your picture or you can categorize them by groups, and of course you can flag or reject them uh, based on, on what you feel is appropriate. So, and then from there, you can of course just pick what you want, and again, it just gives you the option to sort and search your photos based on that criteria. Okay, some of the other things that the program can do also is, uh, essentially it gives you a rating of your photo based on how it perceives it would do if you were to enter this photo in a photo contest. So let's take a look at our little manatee friend over here and let's go over to score. Okay, so this would be a 42.29 on the, uh, I guess, photo contest scale, which probably wouldn't do me pretty good, but let's take a look and see if we can find something that might score a little bit better. Uh, let's take a look at this photo over here and let's look at our score. All right, so this one scores a 75 which would get me a merit for this picture. So, so that's a little bit better, right? Let's see if any of these score a little bit better. 69 on that one, 72. Uh, let's see, no, 79.76, so pretty good there. Right, so that's uh, a pretty amazing feature as well. And that might be really of, of help to anyone who is just getting started with entering their photos into photo contests as well. So there you go, so that's pretty neat. And of course, what good is this system if we can't export the photos, right? So from just a right click, let's double click on this. And from here, you know, again, of course, we can send it out to different editors. Uh, we can create a stack. We can show in the file browser. Uh, we can show the folder. Uh, we can move it, remove it, uh, et cetera. We can rename it. But of course, the important part is we need to be able to export it. So from here, I can quickly export this photo and JPEG or PNG format. We can rename it, save or exclude the metadata, et cetera. And of course, more than likely, since this is a catalog system, you would be just sending this off to an editor, but there may be times when you need to just make duplicates of things for a client or to send off. And you can quickly do that from here. All right, so I hope that uh, you find this program as amazing as I do and you're as excited about it as I am. I know I'm going to be using this literally all the time to find things in my catalog. So a really great program. Hey, I appreciate you watching this video. And if you follow the channel, you know, I pretty much answer just about every question uh, I can here on YouTube. So by all means, uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think that this is a program that you might want to use? And, and what are some of the features about it that impressed you? And, and what do you think about that? Uh, that little area where it kind of rates your picture in terms of how it would score in a photo contest. Actually, I'm kind of excited about that. I think that's, that's kind of amazing, but I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Anyway, hey, um, I appreciate you. And if you found this helpful, please consider subscribing. 
thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. So thanks YouTube. Bye-bye.